Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And make sure you hit that like button because we are at the midpoint of this season. This is where we want to do a lot of player evaluation, evaluation across the NCAA, across our conference, recruiting. We're going to get to all of that in this video. And you don't want to miss any of this action. So make sure you hit that like button. So now first, we are going to look at the coaching skills tree. So remember I said I'm not going to upgrade anything with head coaching. I did have to put one on something when I started the dynasty. It wouldn't let me start without it. So we do have that one, but we're not going to touch it again. So looking at defensive coordinator, we do have three upgrades applied to our defensive coordinator, John Beeson. That's going to be plus two to finesse moves and power moves and then plus one to block shedding. So hopefully this will help. We just did upgrade this one, the power moves and finesse moves up one. So hopefully that'll help us get more sacks because I think that's our weak, weak spot on defense is we don't get any defensive stops because we don't have any help from any pass rushes really. I mean, we do have a couple of guys who can rush the passer pretty well, but nobody that's gonna be like, all right, I'm depending on him for a sack this play no real like von miller or somebody that's just dis disruptive like somebody that just can wreak havoc a little bit and we'll see we'll see how it goes so offensive coordinator looking at steve smith senior we did max out the skill for plus six injury and 50 percent increase in stamina and the plus six injury hopefully it comes around because we did just have a huge injury with sam forbes so let's just look at our schedule here uh and look at our conference standings so looking at our conference, it's actually pretty even on our side on our side of this conference in this division in the East. I mean, if you look at it, we're pretty much in the thick of things. We are two and five, but our conference record is right there with everybody. Troy is three and one in the conference, but we have a chance to play them at the end of the year. But look at us. I mean, we're number one in points four, but we do give up the most points as well. But you know, we have a couple of games that we can do the damage i mean think about it look at our schedule so looking at our remaining part of the schedule we have louisiana louisiana lafayette who is six and one they are straight dominating i mean straight dominating they are on the other side of our division but looking at texas state that should be an easier game one and six texas state but then the last three games they're all teams ranked ahead of us right now Georgia State, Troy, and Appalachian State. They're all ranked ahead of us. So if we win out there, I mean, we have a legit shot to make it to the conference championship. We'll see. But we do need to beat those three teams in order to make it. And I'm sure that they'll beat up on each other uh, because let's look at Troy. Let's see who they play. Let's just look at their schedule. So they do play Appalachian State. So they are going to lose. One of them is going to lose that game. And then they play Louisiana Lafayette, who we are going up against this week. So who knows? I mean, it's going to shake up to look pretty different probably by the end of the week by the end of the year the second second to last week of the year so we'll see so looking at the west here though louisiana lafayette four and zero in conference navy right behind them at five and two so i mean they can easily lose two games and go to second place you never know but they did end up beating navy early on in this season 28 to 17 so they do have the head-to-head -head on navy so I mean, Louisiana, uh, Raging Cajun, I mean, that's, I mean, they're doing good. Six and one. I'm, I'm really shocked at how good they're doing. So let's look across the NCAA now. Top 25 schools. Let's just look at who's there. Michigan is number one. Miami is number two. Number three is USC. So what's funny here, no Alabama. We're not used to seeing Alabama not in the top five at all. They're not even in the top 10. They are 12 in the nation after losing last week to number 20, Tennessee. So, I mean, that's pretty weird to see, but I mean, I guess they can't win all the time as look at Miami of Ohio. They're 8-0, 17 in the nation. So representing for the small schools, the non-BCS conferences is Miami, Ohio as the only really, really small school to be in the top 25. So now let's look at the Heisman watch. Let's move on to that. Let's just see who's there. And remember, this is a mixture of, it's kind of a beta roster. It's in between 2017 and 2018. It's like half 2018 roster, half 2017 roster. So a lot of guys are mixed in from last season who did get drafted or went to the NFL or just graduated. So Lamar Jackson's leading 
the Heisman watch, Rozier right behind him, Roundtree, and then Alonzo Smith and Will Greer. So um, you can see that some of these guys are updated. Will Greer is a senior now. And yeah, so let's uh, actually look at some stats for the year because we want to see what we're doing here because we need to do a little bit of a player evaluation. Why? Because we have a good sample size. I mean, we can we now know who can play, who can't, who makes mistakes, who doesn't. So we're going to do a little bit of depth chart switching in this episode, just making things better for both our offense and defense. And we kind of need to make up for Sanford's injury, so we might have to make a little adjustment there. So looking at our uh, quarterbacks, not having a bad year. I mean, I can't lie. Marcus Mealum has five touchdowns, seven interceptions. But, I mean, he's been coming around the last couple of games looking really good. And then Garcia, I have no doubts if Milan went down that Garcia would step up in, in a big way. I mean, they're both good quarterbacks. None, ha you know, they're not like 70 overalls, 80 overalls. But, I mean, they're low. But it's what we have to deal with. So I like what I'm seeing from them. Milam obviously has the mobility, so it does help him out quite a bit. So looking at the running game, Cameron Yates, 386 yards on 80 attempts. He hasn't gotten many attempts until the last couple games when I've been giving him the ball. But seven touchdowns is actually quite a bit. I mean, he's got a lot of touchdowns. I can't see him making a thousand yards rushing because I can see him probably making about 900 something. But a thousand yards, I don't know if he'll get there. We'll see. I mean, he might. He might. If he has a couple of big games, but I just need to see the consistency first before I can say that he's probably going to make it. So moving on to receiving, it's pretty spread out. I can't lie. Sam Forbes is our leading receiver even after taking that hit last game and getting hurt. Amari Emanuel isn't far behind. 31 receptions. Mason win 32 receptions. So, you know, what I like to see is that this is pretty much even. I mean, 32 receptions, 32 and 31. I mean, our top three receivers are getting the ball equally. It's really throwing the defense off because they can't focus on one guy. And, you know, with these sliders, I'm telling you, if you can do it, move the sliders up on pass coverage to 100. It makes it so realistic. You never know what the computer's going to do in pass coverage. Sometimes they even go after your star receiver. I mean, it's just like, it, it, it's, it's great, man. I, I can't lie. It's great. But looking at, you know, Cameron Yates has 23 receptions, 178 yards, and a touchdown. I mean, he's got a lot of receptions for a running back. And that's a good thing. I hope that, you know, the guy that comes after him, I don't know who's going to start next year, but is like this because having a receiver at a running back that can receive and catch passes and block and be down in there for three downs consistently, I mean, that is good. I thought I would run the double running back system and i do a little bit kuzo does get in but cameron yates is just so impressive that sometimes i feel like i don't need kuzo as much so looking at the rest of our receivers cj goodwin 210 yards and a touchdown paco ashen two touchdowns 272 yards so let's look at blocking here our offensive line let's see who's giving up the most sacks and it looks like brandon rodriguez our right guard is actually giving up the most sacks you would think it would either be the left tackle or right tackle but our left guard is actually giving up, right guard is actually giving up the most tackles. Is Maxwell Gale uh, is giving up the same amount as well, sacks. So it, it's interesting because, you know, our left tackle, Corey Lisi, actually having a really good year. And this pancake thing, I don't think that's right. There's no way these guys have zero pancakes. I've seen it when I was running the ball. These guys have pancakes. So I don't know why this is zero, but just ignore that. So looking at tackles. <clears throat> So this is interesting. So Darius Terry leading the way. That is the guy that I use her during the game. So it, that does make sense. Ryan Marshall having a pretty good year. You know, he started out slow, but now that he's got that experience, 34 solo tackles. That is pretty good. Um, looking at Cedric Granger, he's having a good year as well. Leading our team in picks. The only guy to have an interception on our team, and he has both of them. Orlando Norman doing pretty good on the outside as well not giving up too many big plays Preston Mays he's doing okay um he's hit and miss sometimes Michael Brock Thompson really doing well a lot of tackles for losses six to be exact along with Adam Pritchard who's having a pretty good year as well so looking at the rest of our guys if I keep going down Landon Watkins was getting a lot of tackles 
from the slot position. Uh, Danny Armstead actually having a really good year at left end. Uh, we did change his number to number seven. So he's having a good year. Anthony Lorenz, since moving to slot corner, I mean, just a gem. Just a gem. So many plays in coverage. So many plays in the box. I mean, he's a gem. He's got another year under us as well. I don't think I'm going to start him in the, on the outside next year. I think I'm going to keep him in a slot. I like what he does in a slot. So as we keep moving down here, I mean, you can see. I mean, some of these guys are impre impressive. Some aren't. I mean, Frederick Billups from the defensive tackle position, getting 12 tackles, that's a huge feat. That's a huge feat. He has three sacks on the year. But one guy that, you know, we're going to talk about defensive end. I'm not getting much production out of defensive end because if you look at defensive end, Jalen Joe, he's not even a starter, but he has two sacks, six tackles. Alvin Jefferson's doing okay with five tackles, three sacks. I think he's just there to plug up holes. But, you know, Sam Legate isn't having a great year. And I would expect him to be somewhere along the lines of Danny Armstead. Maybe Danny Armstead's just a better football player right now. And he does have one sack, but 17 solo tackles. He's always around the ball. Sam Legate just isn't doing it for me. So I'm going to have to make a move there. I might move Jalen Joe to the full-time starter because when he gets in, he's got six tackles. He's got more tackles as a rotational piece than Sam Legate has starting. So that's actually uh, that's a weird sign, but maybe I just need to start Jalen Joe. Maybe it'll help me get some pass rush because if you look at his attributes here, he's not a great pass rusher, but he still has more sacks then Sam Legate. I don't know how that is. And Sam Legate's in there most of the time. And look, he has better power moves. He has less finesse moves, though. 40 finesse moves. So maybe that's it. I mean, maybe that's what's holding them back. Um, and then a couple of special teams guys who they have uh, tackles on special teams as well. And I think that covers just about everything with stats. So, you know, let's actually make this change at defensive end. So looking at right end, I do have Danny Armstead at right end. I like him at right end, and he's probably I'm probably going to switch his position to right end next year, and just to make it, you know, I'm kind of OCD like that, seeing him at left end, line up at right end. I don't really like it. And then Sam Legate on the other side, <clears throat> I'm going to keep him at the backup role. I do have Danny Armstead there, but I'm going to move Jalen Joe up. I want to see what he can do. I want to see what he can do as a full-time starter, and hopefully he comes up with more production than Sam Legate. That doesn't mean that Sam Legate's not going to get in. He's going to get in just as much as Jalen Joe is getting in now, but we'll see. I mean, it's going to be, it's it's got to be some type of battle, and right now I think Jalen Joe is winning that battle. Uh, we do also have that freshman, Peter Gonzalez as well. He's sitting there waiting, and you know what's funny about him? He doesn't do a lot of things overly great, but he has 74 power moves. I think he's going to be good in the future. He's got time to sit back, learn the defense, learn technique. So maybe even this year he's going to get in. We'll see. If, if Jalen Joe turns out to be a dud, I might have to just give him a chance. So looking at the other positions, I think we're fine. Danell Hudson is kind of a fill guy. He's just in on a lot of plays. He's athletic. Uh, I like what he does. Ryan Marshall's having a good year and Michael Brock Thompson. I mean, there's no better duo right now on our team than these two. I mean, they're just playmakers right now. I think they're starting to figure it out. So looking at corners, I think we're set here. I don't think we need to make any changes. I do want to see Cedric Walker in a little bit because, you know, he's got high awareness, 73. So I do want to see just in case, you know, something happens with anybody else on the defense as far as our secondary goes i do want to see cedric walker maybe get in and see what he can do so uh i think that's about it for the depth chart let's just uh focus on recruiting now so actually a lot of changes with recruiting have happened a lot of commits if you look at this so we have alan king he was our first commit but looking at who comes after him stephen johnson committed he is a one-star guard, 59 overall. Let's just look at what he does well. Pass block and run block. I like it. I like it a lot. Looking at another guard, we got Jared Allen. He's going to be pretty good as well. I don't know what he's going to look like. I haven't unlocked his ratings. I probably won't just because I don't want to use the scouting points. But another guard, Preston Liang. We, so we got a one-star kicker here. And... Um, I like what he brings. I mean, I like what he brings. 
He's a 68 overall, so he's got to be a good kicker. Alex Snyder, a tackle. He's likely going to get redshirted. A lot of these guys are probably going to get redshirted, with the exception of maybe one or two of these, maybe two or three of these guys probably won't. Connor Eatings, a uh, 54 overall cornerback. He's probably going to get redshirted. It's 67 man coverage, 70 zone coverage. He's probably going to get redshirted at 54 overall. Kier Patterson, I'm probably going to redshirt him as well. I do want to see how he develops with a redshirt year. He is pretty decent right now. He's got good finesse and power moves. So that good combination of two good moves there, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out for him. So looking at Josh Howard, this is a guy that I actually you know i'm looking forward to his impact block it's only 40 though it's pretty low but his run block and pass block is decent but the one guy that i think will not get red shirted justin johnson our number one recruit he's a 6 4 190 receiver out of cincinnati ohio he's gonna be a beast 87 speed 71 catching and i like what he brings so let's just look at the top of our board now because now that we have an adjusted board since all these commits have happened now jack cleck is we're first on his list second is my miami ohio all these guys want to come i mean look at this the only guy that's not coming right now armin hammer uh you know and we don't really need middle linebacker per se so i don't want to go all in on him and miss out on somebody else so i might focus a lot of my points on other guys like uh here robert johnson i do need a safety because pretty soon darius terry's gonna be leaving alan king did commit but he's not much of a tackling safety so i am gonna need a tackling safety let's see what he does well so he does have 75 tackling so like i said i'm gonna need a tackling safety to go along with cedric granger i think cedric granger can tackle pretty well but he's turning into kind of my guy that plays in coverage you never know he, i might end up switching him to free safety we'll see so byron double lap is an athletic tight end 81 speed 82 excel he has 65 route running let's see his catch oh so he actually ends up being pretty good 70 catching 65 route running but 81 speed is pretty good let's see what his blocking is so his blocking is low so that's the thing so you need a good blocking tight end but i am in the lead by a lot with him alex meredith he's a 54 overall cornerback and uh he's probably gonna go up a little bit jack soul is an interesting quarterback he's a pocket passer 75 throw power 70 accuracy i do like him he's gonna get redshirted for sure more than likely so i do want to see what i can do with him i don't know but you know what's interesting i don't know because i mean he might have a shot to start i mean we have a few quarterbacks coming in next year with Kashawn Curtin, uh wesley david i mean he's probably the most accurate right now 70 accuracy so we'll see we'll see andrew chapman an outside linebacker from sheboygan wisconsin i'm gonna put some points on him he it looks like he's pretty good i mean 60 overall yeah let's put some points on him let's make him come so blake Fisher. Blake Fisher, 59 overall. We're in second place for him. Our schedule is on week 14. Let's just unlock some more ratings. So, ooh, he does end up being pretty good. And he's going to be a freshman. Unlike Armin Hammer, who's going to be a Juco, we could possibly get Blake Fisher for four years. Derek Armstrong, another safety here. And I think we're first on his. So all these guys, I mean, we're pretty much in the driver's seat as another quarterback here, Max Johnson at 60 overall let's see so he ends up being throw power that's fine uh we do need to put points on somebody else here and i'm probably gonna do it on mark Wright. i mean he ended up being 54 overall and going up a little bit and i do need some guys from tennessee but look we're a thousand points behind so it's probably not even worth it to be honest to go after this guy but i'll leave him on there just right now and remember i'm not gonna add any prospects to our recruiting board because I wanted this to be challenging I, the, the computer makes it this game made it way easy for you to recruit and i remember the i think it was the game before this one ncaa football 13 i think they even had it so you can set a recruiting difficulty and i wish that they still had that in this game but they don't so they kind of took it out it kind of ruined the fun a little bit and made it made it a lot easier to recruit i think that was the point though of this game i think i remember i remember ben haw miller when they were first uh advertising this game he was saying that they wanted recruiting to be a lot easier so that's exactly what they did so i can't i, mean, I can't knock them for delivering on what they're 
gonna say they're gonna do so that's gonna be it for this episode i did want to just show you guys uh some stats and give you guys my thoughts on the team what do you guys think i mean does who who should be starting is there anybody on the field that jumps off that i might be missing that should be getting more clock maybe on the d line maybe in the secondary maybe on offense whoever it may be because we do have to make up a little bit for the sam forbes injury because if you look at our depth chart now um we do have sam forbes in the slot we're going to keep him there just uh until he comes back but then that means paco ash is going to move up to the slot cj goodwin's going to move up to that uh fourth role and then the fifth role is actually going to be cameron dixon right now but i also you know i might want to put harry lord there because harry lord on offense it seems like he's pretty good i can't lie he's pretty good but he's only got 43 catching i don't see how that's possible when he gets on the field he's a monster and maybe even max moriarty who's actually a better receiver than uh the freshman cameron dixon but you know cameron dixon i think the thing about him is that he's pretty athletic and he can move around quite a bit 76 speed 74 agility compared to moriarty who is 61 agility 73 speed so i think that's the difference i think i'm going to keep keep cameron dixon there right now but uh let me know what you guys think man let me know what you guys think of this team so far this year two and five and going up against a pretty good louisiana lafayette team so we got to get this w next week hit subscribe hit that like button we're gonna get into this action come next week we gotta be i mean can we make it a three game win streak you never know so stay tuned let's get it let's go